This is Tales of Swordfall. Episode 28, Embers Ignite. Hello, I'm Paul, this is Tales of Swordfall, and who am I with tonight? Hello, um, I'm Gatch Righteous, and I will be playing Tukir Flokison, the unconscious Wood Elf Scout. And this is Guy, and I'm playing Nork Valtspur, the halfling monk. And I'm very random butterfly playing Ray and the um, human sorceress rogue troublemaker of the group. <laughs> and I'm Ammon playing Ash, the uh, fire genasi eldritch knight. And I'm Phoenix, and I'm going to be playing a mystery character who will show up later. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's exciting. Yep. Uh, Phoenix is um, a new player, and yeah, that's all you should know. Uh, so where we left the group last time, um, actually, this will be fun. It's been, like, how long do you wait for Tyrker to actually become unconscious? Or, I mean, reconscious, very conscious, awake, one might say. Uh, I don't know. I feel like that could almost go to a roll. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Give me a 1d4. <laughs> Alright. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, an hour goes by since the uh, trouble troublesome trio left, and Trigger starts to wake up. Uh, did you even try to place him in the bed, or did you leave him on the floor in that hallway in the house? I mean, I, I didn't. He's too big. <laughs> I could probably carry him. I'll drag him over and throw him on the bed, because no one else is in the house. Ryan but... might try to help. <laughs> I mean, he is just kind of knocked down on the floor. Probably at the point you pick him up, I'm, like, reaching my arms up, and I can't really do much anyway. It's Okay. The monk that punches giant things in the face is like, ah, oh, I can't be bothered. I mean, it's a wood elf, not a goliath. I'm not super worried about it. <laughs> so, I probably weigh the same Norik. <laughs> <laughs> so, dear, you find yourself um, in the house still. Um, mm -hmm. You're not in the doorway anymore, the front doorway. Um, everything's a little hazy. Your mouth is really dry. Uh, your v vision is a little blurred. Um, you you kind of have a pain in your arm, and you don't know what's happened. But you know, someone's placed you in in a bed, and uh, Cleese is doing her best job to make it into a nice nest. Hmm. Okay. So she's probably just clawing on my stomach. Uh, I'm back. She's she's clawing on the mattress that you're on, you know. Mm. Got it. Thanks, thanks, please. That's in his head. Um, what? What is going on? How did I get in a bed? And I'm gonna try sitting up. <laughs> is that something I can do? I seriously don't uh, even know what happened to me. Yeah, uh, give actually. This might sound strange, but give me a strength saving roll. Ooh, okay. In case anyone's wondering, uh, Wood Elf Scouts aren't the strongest, but here we go. So, you know that sensation when you, like, do fully sit back up, but gravity just pushes you back down? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Turker's getting that right now. Like your oh. your limbs are slightly numb. Um as I said, mouth is dry. And Turker you just hear Cleus just Meh! 
in a happy little way <laughs> and nuzzles against you. Oh, That's cute at least. And, uh, is anyone actually, like, did you guys just leave Turker, Turker in the, in the bed? Is uh, no one, like, actually in the room? Uh, Norik went to just keep an eye out out front. Brian might be scouting to see if there's anything else she could take. <laughs> um, is Ash the responsible one? Uh, I think Ash will will take a a, a little sit down in the room because he was uh he got a little beat up in that fight anyway. He's gonna take a little rest, so I'll probably be sitting like at the door or something, just on the floor. Yeah, probably out of my eyesight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah, uh, so you kind of see uh Tierker twitching. Oh, hey, you're alive. Yes, I'm alive. Uh, why am I in so much pain, and why can't I move? Ash, give me a wisdom or an uh, intelligence saving throw for a moment. Intelligence saving throw. Yep. Oh. I. Uh, kind of mush mouth and not making any sense. I to him, <laughs> he's making complete sense, but to you, it's it's a little garbled. <laughs> Uh, I uh, can't. To me what happened? <laughs> I can't understand what you're uh, trying to say, Tierker. But um, oh. you were shot, so you might want to keep laying there for a little bit. You just hear aggravated breathing. <laughs> <laughs> just. <laughs> I'll go up and kind of give him a little pat on the shoulder and be like, "Yeah, I know. Uh, you should be okay in a in a in a bit." Just a concerned, intense stare from the bed. That's what you're getting because apparently I can't talk. <laughs> well, you can't talk. It's just really hard to understand at the moment. Yeah, I've I've heard it and seen it in others. So. Yep. Not gonna. Ash just uh, shrugs and. Kind of looks apologetic and, and walk out to tell uh, Norik and Rianne that Kierker's awake. So, Brian, you said you were gonna what case the town? No, I was gonna look at the area, well, the the house. But now that I think about it, there was a halfling who was asking for me to check their house. Oh yeah, whose name was vaguely like Bilbo, but I think I changed it to Val, and uh, I can't quite remember what the name is anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, right. And he was he was yeah. gonna pay you like twenty gold to just check check on his stuff. Mm hmm. I think I might do that. I um, yeah. and I believe he did give you directions in town where he lived. So mm -hmm. uh, give me. Yeah. Give me a survival check with advantage to see if you can actually navigate through this uh, very torn up town. 16? Yeah, that's good enough. Yeah. Um, you, you find his house... I mean, Longborough is not a very big town. It's kind of dinky compared to like some of the other places that you've you know, slummed at. And, Ooh. um... Burn Norik. <laughs> it's, it's true uh, <laughs> I mean all things considered I think most of the places she's probably slept at is alleyways so this is mm. probably a step up yeah like camping in the woods is probably a step up <laughs> true um, so you find the place uh, it's been ransacked um, mm. it looks like everything's just torn up Except for one chest. Okay. Is it locked? Um. Give me... Um, do you touch it? That's, that's my question. Of course I touch it. <laughs> ah, okay. You hmm. touch it and it instantly starts rattling. 
Oh. Can I just kind of inspect this? Uh, what would I need to roll for this? Investigation. Investigation. Okay. Yes. It, it seems like a pretty normal chest, um, except whenever it seems like you place your hand on it, it starts rattling. So there might be something inside. It might be trapped. I mean, it's hard to tell, but it's untouched in this very ruined wrecked room. I mean, this looks like somebody literally uh, tossed the mattress, uh, opened up all the closets. Um, yeah, it, it's it's literally somebody ransacked the house. Hmm. Well, you know, I might get someone else involved just in case if it's something that attacks me. <laughs> I've got 14 out of 46 and I don't want to die. Yeah. <laughs> so, she just runs back. Okay. And uh, this is the point where... Um... Ash is probably tell telling Nork, who's still there, um, mm -hmm. that Tyrker's awake. Oh, well, it's about time. Yeah, he's... The uh, antidote took a long time. Yeah, he's uh, not still not doing so well. I uh, can't really understand oh. him kind of mush mouth, but uh, hopefully he'll pull around in a minute. <sighs> right, let me go see him. I'm going to walk in. And say, Kirker, you got shot. It was poisoned. Glad you're alive. <laughs> and Tikker's going to try to say, and who shot me? And uh, give me an intelligence save to see if you can uh, understand him. Already on top of it. I think I understood him. Uh, yeah, you totally understood him. Apparently you are used to listening to uh, people who are getting up from some really bad intoxications. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Some people that uh, might just be overly inebriated and uh, or recovering from. <laughs> uh, well, you sound like trash, but um, yeah, I'm glad you're getting better, but... Uh, it was, it was this, this elf, it was an elf, right? Yeah, it was an elf. <laughs> it was this elf guy, and he had, uh, he had a, a, I believe it was a half-orc and a goblin, was that correct? Yep. Yeah, and a half-orc and a goblin with him. Uh, he was, uh, he had a, uh, a gun, he shot you from long range, and uh, you collapsed from the poison in the shot. And then what happened? And then we fought them, and let's just say we do better with you, Conscious. <laughs> but um, we all got to live. And um, I would say the the loss was minimal. What was the loss besides me being unconscious? So you might notice your jacket has a hole in it. It is a bit breezy. I can't um, really lift my head. <clears throat> okay. Well, they were also after these puzzle pieces. Now you mm -hmm. still have you still have one piece, but we had to do something. So you have the piece that now leads to the one that they took. And we, I, I believe both you and I probably saw where the 
next one is that they're going to get. Hmm. So the loss, I would say, although we lost one of those, we do know where two of them are in addition to the one we still have. So you gave them a puzzle piece to spare our lives. That's that's the basic gist of it. I uh, tried to make sure they only knew we had one. Ah. Well, let me just think and recover for a moment. <laughs> you go ahead and do that. <laughs> Nork's just going to leave him, just leave the room. He doesn't want <laughs> to have to do anything further for a bit. <laughs> I guess this is when Rian kind of walks in. It's like, uh, guys, I found something. What do you find now? So there was a half. Are you stealing stuff asking. again? Are you trying to steal things again? You're I'm... always. I, I know you took things from. I mean, I, 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 I don't know, but I have a hunch. You took things from here. But my hunch says that I know you did. It might be right. It might be wrong. <sighs> Okay, oh, whatever. Anyway, that's not the important thing. The important thing was someone asked me to check their house here. I checked their house. Everything's ransacked except for this one teeny tiny little box. Now I tried touching it and it jumped. I do not want to face this alone. I don't know what's in it. I'm kind of scared. You know, it's pretty weird. I could use a little backup. Just a little. Can I... I assume you guys are just right outside of the door, right? Uh, sure. Yeah, I think yeah. we're... I think we're okay. right in the vicinity. Yeah. yeah would, would I be able to roll something to know of any weird chests like that, or... Well, stuff? uh... In recent times, I mean, um, mm -hmm. Tyrker did get um, ambushed by mimics that were in chest form. It is true. Uh, you can also do me a nature check to see if anything else matches a description. Okay. I would love to do that because I remember, or Tyrker remembers from the uh, chest that he touched that it was adhesive and then it tried to eat him. <laughs> But... <laughs> yeah, and Rand saying she touched it and it wasn't adhesive. It's I'd... like a, a rattlesnake chest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's there's probably something inside, and like that's that's good enough to know it's not mimics because mm. Rand probably would be dead. Yeah, off alone in a corner with a mimic. Yep. Um, would that nature check give me any further detail? the 26 uh you would know that it's either a small or tiny creature if it's fitting in a normal sized chest probably a tiny creature since we're dealing with halflings and everything they have are a little bit smaller um and yeah i mean uh, it, it could be a lot of things I and mean, it could be a rat trapped in a chest for all you know but mm. it has to know that the chest is being touched, so probably something with blind sense or some kind of like extrasensory perception. He's gonna try and mumble loudly, though probably not very loudly because he's again mush mouth. There's something inside the chest. Be wary, it might have been left in there for a reason. Ash, you totally would understand this. Should I do yeah. my wisdom? Yeah, uh, intelligence save. Intelligence, uh -huh. Actually, no, it's Nork who would totally understand this. <laughs> no, like, you, you, hear, you hear some kind of unholy groaning coming from the uh, bedroom. I think Rianne's learned to just omit 
Tyrker's voice anyways. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the voice of reason. Not going to listen to that. Yep. What is he telling me to not to do what I want? No. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Narc's just going to say back to him, well, should we even bother opening it if it's just an animal? Can you bring the chest to the house without opening it to this house? Rayanne? Well, I think I can restrain myself for that long. <laughs> Do you need a hand carrying it? Probably a good idea. Yeah, just in case. I don't want to be alone here, because what if it is something dangerous? That's, yeah, of course what I meant. Does uh, Kierker need one of us to stay with him? I mean, it would probably be a, you know, he is not, he doesn't seem to be doing well, but, you know, are you the type of people who would, you know, be caring enough to be like, oh, Tyrker, here's some water, or, oh, Tyrker, like, let me help you sit you up. Maybe, uh... Yeah, I know Norik wouldn't. <laughs> well, maybe Norik, though, since you can understand that uh, gobbledygook, uh, I'll go help Brian carry the chest and we'll be right back in case Tyrker needs anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, you go do that. I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll be right here. Brian might care, but she's more distracted by shiny things. <laughs> Um, Tyrker, give me a, uh, constitution saving throw. Yeah. Con save. Con is save. Is this against, uh, is this against, oh, wait, gosh, my brain. Um, LV stuff, let me check something here. It's not, it's not something that put me to sleep, right? Uh, it's nothing magical that put you to sleep. Hmm. This is okay. this is a straight up poison. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, you're not doing any better. No, I'm stuck. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're you're starting to get like a little bit more feeling as time goes on, but I'm coaxing Kalise to kind of chew on my hand so I can feel something, <laughs> <laughs> and she'll probably just chew on your hand and lick it and just. You know, she's mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, mom, you're uh, mm -hmm. not doing well. Nope. Like oh, the whole, man. like, when you're sick and your animal's just near you, like, well, I hope this helps. <laughs> yeah, this is the best I can do because I'm an animal. And Nark's gonna just sort of awkwardly hang around, just kind of, well, is there anything, like, you need? I can get it for you, I guess. Do you have anything to help with poison? <clears throat> I, uh, I already gave it to you. Oh. Yeah, once your tongue kind of starts getting back into, uh, like, consciousness, uh, you feel like you drink some mineral water. You know, you kind of have that weird aftertaste. Uh, tear her. Yeah. You mean this water with minerals you gave me? Yeah, that's that's supposed to be the uh, <clears throat> that's supposed to be the antidote there. Um. Can I just roll either a medicine or a survival to how to explain how that's not a thing? Yes, please. <laughs> Which one would you like? Uh, whichever suits you the best. So they're both pretty good. I'll go with survival, though. Cool beans? 22. Yeah, um, I like, you can tell, you've had, like, restoration potions and stuff before. And, no, this is like, someone took, like, spring water from, like, a mountain... <laughs> And, like, uh, the vial's near you enough, and you're, like, 
blimp arm you can control enough that you can like smell the vial that uh this stuff was once in no this is like mineral mountain water so we just got ripped off hells yes <laughs> you gave me water that's it I'm gonna go be in the kitchen. I'll, uh, I guess you're good here. And Nark just walks out of the room. What? <laughs> well, you're walking away. What made you think this was an antidote? I don't know. And he's walking out. <laughs> <laughs> because of bad insight rolls. That's why. <laughs> Nark's gonna, gonna walk back into the room and. He didn't have any trouble uh, before finding the stash of mushrooms. So, I'm guessing he wouldn't have trouble now. <laughs> um, Nork's gonna grab for the stash of mushrooms he had on him and just open up the jar and flick one at his face. It just, uh, just lands there on his face and close the jar back up. Here, are you happy now? And he's going to walk back out of the room. So let's see if Tyrker doesn't eat it out of spite. <laughs> That's where he's at right now. <laughs> I don't even know what kind of role that would be. Um, um, well, you're trying to overcome some kind of emotional state, right? Yeah, it's usually wisdom. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um... <laughs> So he's gonna refuse the mushroom out of spite. <laughs> he's that pissed right now. As much as he knows this mushroom would probably help and it would make him feel better and he could just ignore the fact and have a good waking up and all that. This is in his perspective, by the way. Um, no, it's I'm not gonna eat that mushroom. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Tales of Swordfall. Please consider listening to these podcasts. Hello folks, JP Winterbottom here to tell you about The Beholder's Eye, a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons narrative-focused actual play podcast about a group of private investigators in a fantasy noir setting with eldritch horror undertones. You can find The Beholder's Eye every other Friday on iTunes, SoundCloud, or anywhere podcasts are found. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.